Today we're going to be going over the Lesson 12 Contact Horses Lab. We started by taking a piece of laminate flooring and hoisting it up about 8 to 12 inches with a stack of books. You can use whatever's in your classroom as long as it's about 8 to 12 inches. The students can replicate that with their setups as well with the same height. After we had the laminate flooring positioned up, we added a brick down here at the bottom and then we placed our metal track directly on top of it. So this may be very similar to what was seen in past labs. We're just making sure that we have the brick down here. So that way whenever carts accidentally fall, they have something to fall into and not off the table. After we have this track set up, we then start thinking about our carts. So our first cart here, we're going to take our push pull spring scale that we've always been using, and we're going to just attach it to the top. And we'll do the same with both. After we have our two push-pull spring scales, you'll notice that we do have one that has the peak horse collar on it from previous investigations. The peak horse collar is set so that it ends up at zero. This is something we'll definitely want to point out to students. And we know that we're going to have to have them on this track. So whenever we have them on this track, we're going to be placing protective materials in between them. But with those protective materials, they don't necessarily fit on the end of these plungers. So we are going to be using plastic electrical plates. Now these are blank plate covers. They don't have any openings for any outlets. We take a little piece of sticky tack. We're going to place the piece of sticky tack just a little bit down from the center, about right there. And we're going to stick them onto the plungers. The reason we do that is so whenever it ends up on here, it's not scraping. So we're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting by twisting this one. We want to make sure it's a little below center so it does not scrape. We're going to do that with both of our electrical plates. So one more time, I'm just fitting some sticky tack here. And I'll do it just a little bit below the center. We'll take the two parts and we'll bring them together to see if they line up. So if you look at this from the top, you'll be able to see that we aren't quite lined up. So all we have to do is take it and just twist it a little bit until they line up a little bit better. So this one will have to come down or this one will have to come up. We're gonna go ahead and just move it up just a little bit. Bring them together. Okay, we're getting a lot closer. Tilt this one a little bit more one way. And now they're flush. So we wanna show students that they're flush whenever they touch. We may even just have to kind of tiny twist them and that is fine. So, as long as they are flush whenever they're ending up together, that's what we want. Whenever students run this investigation, we also know that these protective materials have to be placed gently on here. So we're going to take just some regular, you know, regular school tape and twist it up. And just place those pieces of tape onto the back of our selected potential protective material. We are using the large bubble wrap for this. We're going to put it on both of the electrical tapes or plates. So I'm just going to do a couple of these on each one because it is kind of a larger material. You may not have to do this with some of the smaller materials, but since this is so large, we'll just put two on. So there's one. And there's one. So whenever students do this, you'll make sure that you have the two materials that are able to run towards each other. Okay, so you see that they're a little bit crooked. So I'm just going to twist them so that way whenever they touch, they are good. So now it's time to secure this to the bottom of our ramp. In your teacher setup, you will not have to have these on here, but I felt like it was a great opportunity for us to show exactly what they're doing and where they're at. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And we want to tape this down about four inches from the bottom. So I've got my handy dandy little measuring tape here. I'm going to make sure to tape it at four inches. Okay. So I've got a piece of tape. Tape it down. Not quite long enough, so we're going to do one more. Don't be afraid to use much tape. Use as much as you need. 
just make sure it's pretty secure. So that's pretty good. Whenever you run this the first couple of times with students, you're going to do it with a blank plate and nothing else. So one more time, we are just lining them up. We're gonna get really good at lining these up. There we go. And we're just gonna run them into each other. So every time we set it to zero, we wanna bring this up to the top and release. So we have our peak force collar that's moved here. The reason that we have it on this one and not on this one is because this one, as you noticed, it does jump a little bit whenever it hits. So you wanna make sure that gravity is also not pulling on that one. So you always wanna make sure the peak force collar is on this one. Whenever students are doing this, right before they do it, I guess, with the demo, you wanna make sure that you do this from a couple different heights. So that way students can get the idea that you use control for height because that does affect the peak force and the collision. We also wanna make sure that we are really making sure that this is really, really well taped down. So the students are working, just go around, make sure that things are taped down properly, make sure that they're resetting this force collar, and it should be a great lab.